Welcome, everybody, once again to the Arizona News Show. We, I'm, I am Rick, Mr. Negative. Oh, there she and, goes. And Ruby is doing the <laughs> pop in, pop out. Uh, it wouldn't be a show without it. There you are. Welcome back. You've got camera right, gremlin. Guys. Keep it now you're zoomed in. Now you have a delay. I'm going to. I'm gonna try. Uh, the best I'm gonna remove you and put you back on. Here we go. So, yeah, we'll just keep doing this till we get it straight. Hi. So. Hopefully that works. Right. Perfect. That did the job. Okay. Well, um, busy, busy week. Yesterday was the uh, uh, Fed announcement. Shocking announcement that they went up 0.25 as expected. And really looking forward to seeing your charts, Pat. And uh, taking a look at that. I'm gonna touch on where the Arizona market is right now because it's. Uh, um, resilient. I thought when rates got up to seven that the spring market was dead. And, uh, you know, it's sometimes it's really nice to be wrong all of the time. Um, so I, got yeah. the, I, I have uh, the Cromford Market Index. Now, earlier in the week, they, they said in this article that they showed some weakness, that it actually came down just a hair. And I was looking at my seven-day moving average, and I'm thinking, well, I don't see it yet, but I do today, um, which means that they're probably getting looking at some different data than what I had. And if I zoom in on this, you can see. And they said that, you know, with the with the bank troubles that were out there, that just caused some jitters. And you can see it. It's see that slight right there, down just a hair, number of contracts. And so the gap between number of new contracts and new listings grew to like 380. Um, so there there was an impact. But then we look and we go, you know, canceled listings have dropped way off. People are not giving up. Um, we're down to 114. It's a busy, busy chart. Um, but then when we look at the dashboard, dollar volume shows were down 33.5% versus uh, last year on the monthly and on annual down 22.4. So, but then again, it went up. See that? Dunk, dunk, dunk. Yep. It's dollar yep. volume. Dunk, dunk, dunk. <laughs> don't 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 gets pretty clear and days on market um green means it's it's you know pretty favorable for sellers and then the success rate is the one that's interesting they're all in the green this month and the historic average so historic average so the success rate is 68.7 and we're sitting there at 78.8 so the market although it's way way slower is uh is doing pretty good so i can't uh I, you know, I guess define good. Um, you know, there's not as much volume out there to be shared equally with agents, but uh, those that are trying are, you know, hanging in there. And, and for sellers, you know, you can sell your house. There, There's uh, not a struggle. And for buyers, um, you're getting some pretty good terms. So it's kind of like the best of both worlds right mm -hmm. now, despite I, all the gloom and doom. I think it's a good market for buyers or sellers. Yeah. I, I wouldn't mind being either one right now. Mm -hmm. it, the I feel the most secure saying that in the last three years, that's for sure. Yeah, no kidding, no kidding. <clears throat> well, Excuse me, Pat, it's still imperative. You're still what? It's still imperative to have that your home priced right. I mean, we're in a market oh. where you have to price it right or it's going to sit there. And yeah. it has to show well and be presented right. well. Yeah, if you're firing on all cylinders, your house will move. Mm -hmm. um, there's no doubt about it. So, But people are looking. There's still a flight to quality. So, you know, there's not a, there's only interest in junk if you're going to give the house away to an investor. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, you can't walk into a house and expect somebody to go, well, I'll fix that. There's not in the mood for it. Speaking of investors, my yeah. investors <clears throat> bugging me is popping up quite a bit lately. I'm getting a lot of those phone calls too. You know, Rick, yeah. you got anything for me? No, no, I don't. But so Pat, was yesterday a wild ride, calm ride? What happened? Uh, <clears throat> the day before was a wild ride. <clears throat> um, we got, it's been interesting <laughs> to say the least, obviously this last couple of weeks, everybody's anticipating what the heck's going to go on with the feds. But um, as you see right here, right now, the we're still seeing follow through on the bond. The five and a half is up 16 basis points. The, the, the treasury, you know, is down three basis points at 341. Um, but let me just flip this around here because it keeps flipping back on me here. Um Give me one second here while this reloads here. Um, this is basically rates. I'm, this is obviously rate, not prices, but we saw a high on the, you know, the 10 year at 406. 
but we hit a low of 342. So that's what um, by March, March 3rd. And basically about two and a half weeks later, we're seeing 60 basis point move in the, in the 10 year treasury. So it's been, um, it's been a good move. Obviously you saw this move down before, as I always say, the market always has a tendency to look ahead and, you know, somebody knows something because you saw bonds reacting positively. Um, and then we, you know, last, this is, you know, last couple of days with the feds, you know, coming out, they came, they, um, have had a great day the last couple last couple of days really so it's been it's kind of interesting I mean they bumped it up a, th- a quarter point <clears throat> but Barry Habib has just been on this tirade um, I mean the guy has proven to me that he knows what the heck he's talking about because um, he was he ripped apart the Paul speech a little bit saying he's he said the Fed is still making a mistake. Um, He's saying the Fed, you know, if you think about it, the Fed says, you know, unemployment's low, right? You know, that the economy's doing well, right? That's a question for you, Rick, right? You're going to just on that. <laughs> well, I, I'm, oh, I see. I'm the, one that, I'm the one that asked the questions, Pat. I know, I know. I'm throwing yeah. it yeah. Throw me off. But, you know, if you think um, about no, it. I, it didn't, I don't, unemployment, you know, I guess it depends on what sector you're looking at. Um, but here, here's his theory is that typically before a recession start. It's, it's kind of opposite if you think about it. The jobs, the unemployment rates can be low before a recession hits. Then obviously when a recession starts hit, hitting, they go up. When it, jobs are, you know, unemployment's high, you know, then it's the, it's kind of the opposite, really. True. And, was, you know, recessions really start when unemployment is low. It's been proven that. But he goes, the banks are still sketchy. Um, you know, Powell's saying the banks are strong. You know, he's basically saying it's just um, he's got to say that. Which is, you know, he's got to say that. Well, you can imagine a run on the banks if he didn't say it. Yeah, I mean, no doubt. I mean, but he said, you know, based on this volatility with all that's going on with the banks, it's really in the tea leaves that um, banks are going to tighten their lending standards. They're not going to be flowing money out the bank, out the doors like they were, because obviously they have to keep, you know, um, their asset base, you know, as far as um, you know, depositories, but. Um, he did say that, you know, he did back up and say that they may do future hikes. So that they basically left the door open saying, hey, we might not hike next time, but we might. So by him saying the word may um, really opened up the door to say, hey, we might pause the next go around. But um, he he went out. He just pounded Paul. I mean, on this, he stopped the video a couple of times. He said, you know, he he acknowledges, you know, Paul did acknowledge that real time rents are falling. And this is what Barry's been saying the last four or five months. He said that the rents really, they're looking at past data. They're not looking at forward data. Yeah. yeah. Um, they're always looking at past data. And that's what he, you know, these academia, they look at, oh, this is what happened in the last couple of months. So he was busting his chops about the, um, the real, the rents that go into the personal, the PCE numbers, you know, Paul was saying it's 44%, but actually it's like 20%, 22%. Um, he says, we are seeing slower inflation. And he was amazed that um, Powell said he wants to destroy the economy. I don't know if he said this in the speech. I didn't see the speech, but maybe he was, but he was pounding on the fact that Powell was um, trying to throw the economy into a recession based on airline fares, cable TV, pet services, car insurance. He said that's what he wants to ruin the economy because of those things, the inflationary uh, bits in those in those parts of the economy. And um, but he said, you know, obviously he did, you know, volatility right now is creating this gap between the mortgage backed security market and treasury. When you see this, this volatility, you're going to see gaps in the MBS, you know, the mortgage backed security pricing and the treasury, you know, back and forth. So it's been a it's been very volatile. I mean, I was I was looking at uh, locking some people before last week, but everyone was getting, you know, antsy, you know, on Facebook. You had all these loan officers saying we're going to lock. But I just I, I waited on some people because I'm like, you know, something says in the tea leaves that we're going to see some the opposite effect of what people think. And um, I mean, rates were at seven, seven, eight, seven, a quarter. And I locked some people at six and a half, you know, the last couple of days. Just by wow. watching. So, it, you know, it, it definitely helped. But um, it's going to be volatile. I mean, there's no doubt. Uh, but he said the banks are going to tighten and uh, they, that is going to lead to more recessionary pressure down the road. Well, question question for you. When you say 
banks are going to tighten? Do they really tighten on mortgages or do they tighten more on venture capital? Just overall, I mean, they'll t- I mean, fa- the banks through Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac will tighten through their algorithms. They'll, they'll, um, you know, they might go where I got an approval at say, f- you know, say forty six or forty seven percent DTI. All of a sudden, now I, I'm getting approval. I can't get approval. It's got to be down to 40, 41, 42. Gotcha. I mean, there's little things in a file they could. But Fannie Mae comes out. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac come out with uh, different revisions ever. So I, I mean, like seems like they come out about every month, month and a half, it seems like with different revisions and they can tighten within their guidelines. All of a sudden you're not getting approval for a different file. But um, does that answer your question? I mean, in terms yes, of. Life, yeah. I, yeah. Cause I always hear, you know, banks are going to tighten and I'm like, you know, well, how, how exactly do that? It's, it's. Uh, it's not uh, so know. much. Well, it's, a, it's, a, it's, the, it's not so much. Well, it's just the Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac will tighten. And then the bank has to conform to Fannie, Fannie and Freddie Mac, you know, guidelines. So. Well, Jackie, we you know saw some numbers this week the Cromford report where basically they said that that uh, sales had dipped down just a little bit uh, over worries over um, these you know couple banks collapsing. Um, I but are you feeling that out there at all in the market? Not really. I I no, I'm not. Um, I've actually had a few people that were on the fence last year that have been reaching out because their leases are coming due. And so they're asking about rates. They're discussed trying to make decisions. They're asking me to start setting them up on searches again to see what's out there. Um, I I think they've had some time to become realistic on their wishes for a home. Um, I'm not now I am talking to more sellers. So I've had, we've got several different people, that are suddenly talking about possibly listing um, coming up. And that's surprising me a little bit because I've had a few people um, that are locked in really super low interest rates and they're not moving out of state and they're not Mm. having job transfers. And suddenly they're talking about possibly moving. Staying in the Valley, which surprised me. Yeah. Yeah. So do you think they're going to move into new builds or what's their incentive? No, they're just kind of, they're just asking to look at values right now of their home. I don't know if they're thinking, you know, maybe because things have stabilized somewhat, maybe they're thinking it's, you know, they're, they're asking me, is it a good time to sell? And I'm like, absolutely. Right now it's a good time to sell. We've got no inventory hardly. So they're just asking me to do some valuations and see where the numbers are. Because they, you know, one one person I was talking to, for instance, she's up in Black Canyon City, and she was afraid she had she had bought her home in t- August of twenty one. She was afraid she had lost the equity in it, and I'm like, no, absolutely not. So I ran numbers for her, and she was actually pleasantly surprised where she sits. But you know, um, I, I I'm shocked for that people are reaching out actually contemplating selling just to stay in the valley that it's not for other reasons i mean we always have the divorce and the job transfer and the you know retirement or the move up move down but it's just i've had some random calls about people just thinking maybe it's time to sell ruby what's your pulse on the market out there what's going on well we've had a couple good listing appointments this week that um we're really positive with the sellers that we met with. I've got buyers that I'm trying to fulfill um, that, you know, just trying to find houses for them. Um, so we're, I'm busy. We're busy. So it's, you're, you not really have much got to say. I have a client out of Utah that was going to rent for a year and then they popped back up and said, yeah, we're not going to rent. We're going to go ahead and buy, um, and, you know, just, they don't want to miss out on the market. Yeah, it seems like the sentiment really changed this month. You know, just it, yeah. you know, and, and and not in by huge leaps and bounds. I mean, you know, we're still this is our inventory level. You know, thirteen thousand four hundred seventy-one. And I think today for a Thursday, uh, we have. Let me look. It was fourteen thousand one hundred yesterday. My number always comes up a little bit different than what they they have here. But let me see what I can find for active listings today because today will be the lowest. 14,164. So, mm-hmm. so it'll be, that's about 100 lower than, than last week. 
Uh, but then contracts went down below um, last week by about a hundred. So it's uh, it's like, you know, it's just this happy little equilibrium. It feels normal. Yeah, yeah. It kind of well, just, just feels spring break. We're just ending spring break. Spring training was going on. So I'm surprised at the amount of activity we have had given those um, activities. I just feel bad for all the people that flew down here for spring training games and it's been raining cats and dogs. Yeah. And, uh, oh, we needed know. it though. Oh, California. I read this morning, they have had 12 atmospheric rivers and uh, one, and there's another big one coming next week and just Crazy. one after another. And they showed the, the vapor trail coming up from Hawaii and, you know, all the reservoirs are flowing over and you know, overflowing. There's a lot of flooding. The ground can't take it anymore. And we haven't even begun to talk about the spring runoff yet. So, mm -mm. you know, you know, cheers for the drought being uh, getting a big dent put in it. But wish we could do it without the damage. And then yesterday, Los Angeles had a tornado touchdown. I, I saw, saw that. And, uh, <laughs> I, when I worked Crazy. for the baking, when I worked for the baking company, and that's where we got our bread was out of Montebello, California. And I looked at the tornado and it said it touched down at 1200 south vale and our bakery was at 480 south vale so like that's like seven oh, wow blocks, seven huh. blocks away i'm looking at the photos trying to see if their roof got torn off but uh that's pretty much a uh an industrial neighborhood you know, a lot of yeah a lot of rail cars a lot of warehouses and stuff but uh you know it's not the first tornado that's touched down over there it's called a uh uh i think they called it category one it's enough to have one up. yeah but jeez, I mean, I'm glad it stayed over there and not here. So it, but, um, you know, today we finally got some sunshine and then I was sharing yesterday, this is a good time to start driving up into the hills and looking at the uh, flowers that are, that are blooming, especially if you go up Hunt Highway, mm -hmm. which is past, uh, like on your way to Lake Saguaro or Canyon Lake. So and there's a lot of scenery going on. So you got something there you want to show me, Pat? I no, I'm good. Oh, I do. Oh, okay. I yeah, don't know if okay. you guys can see it. No, we just see a big white screen. Watch this. This is, I'm going to see if you can see it. it oh, I can oh, see yeah, it. I almost. Don't move. Which yeah, river is that? That is by my house. Wow. Oh, it's just a wash. Wow. <laughs> I, I did a double close. take because I was like, what the heck? And so I stopped and I filmed it. Is but, that the Aqua Fria? No, that's not even the Aqua Fria. This is just literally a wash around the corner. Oh, my goodness. Well, they say our reservoirs are 87% of normal, and the spring runoff hasn't started yet. Yeah. Right. Uh, so that's why they're letting all that water out, so they can make room for all this water yeah. that they're expecting. Yeah. It's amazing how quickly it, it changed. This is one of the wettest years I recall. So it's yeah. quite I think they said it's our wettest winter or highest snowpack in like almost 30 years, something like that. Yeah. Next I've got 27 I feet. It was I heard. Who got what was it? I thought 93. I oh. Go ahead. That would be 30 years, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, I heard on the news that Flagstaff got 27 feet of snow. Wow. Oh, uh, that's not for me. I'll stay down. Anyway, here. me too. All right, let's no. get back to real estate. This is not a weather channel. <laughs> well, it is. It is now because um, the weather has had an impact on on uh, some showings, um, especially from people from California. So the California oh, yeah. exodus has slowed because a lot of people in Northern Cal they just don't have time to even think or consider about putting their house on the market. So they're not, you know, getting themselves to where they can relocate here right now. They're mm -hmm. the ones that are taking the biggest brunt of these storms and a lot of homes have been destroyed. So kind of makes you wonder going forward how much more inbound California traffic we're gonna see as long as these storms keep keep hitting them. And so there's always these events that you can't control that go, oh, I, I, didn't, I didn't see that coming. So yeah. but, um, I, I see, um, I, I'm starting to see some other um, news stories out there talking about how low sales are, like it's this really bad thing because they're just comparing them to last year. Even Redfin came out with an article. You know, people are putting down smaller down payments. Um, sales are down 27%. And, and you look at that and go, oh, that's really bad. Well, from what the numbers that we just looked at here, it's really not that bad. 
it's kind of welcome. <laughs> Um, well, I mean, putting down smaller down payments is not the worst thing in the world, too, because I always tell people if you buy a million dollar home and, you know, what people don't understand, I mean, leverage is good. I mean, you buy a million dollar home. I see a lot of million, million and a half dollar homes. They pay cash for it. But let's say you buy a million dollar home. You're putting all your cash in that house and the market says, let's say it does go down 25 percent. You just lost quarter million dollars of your own money. But if you buy a million dollar home and you say put you know, half that money down, you know, it goes down 25%. You're only, you know, you're losing 125 versus 250. You let the bank kind of participate in that, you know, that roll down. So sometimes it's not, you know, people say, oh, I, I pay cash or I put a big down payment down. Sometimes I question and say, is that really the, the safest uh, strategy? I've had, I've had sellers question me sometimes about when we're looking at offers. Well, I don't think they're putting enough down. What do you think? I said, I'm not the one borrowing the money. It's up to the bank. Yeah, I mean, right. I honestly, I mean, it sounds crass, but I don't, I don't care. That that shouldn't have any, any, that should not, I hear that all the time from, you know, from different agents. I'm like that, honestly, that, that shouldn't have any bearing on it whatsoever. Cause right. it's, just, it's basically a financial decision. I mean, um, you know, quite frankly, 5%, 10%, 15, as long as they're qualified, you know, who cares? <laughs> yeah. Larger down not payment doesn't course, mean you're more serious. Course, Huh? I said a larger down payment doesn't mean you're more serious, does it? No. No. I mean, I mean, you see VA buyers that could pay cash for their house, but they're just using their money for other things. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> once it's once your money's in the house, yeah, you can get a HELOC and you can take, you know, do a cash out, but it's a lot harder to take it out than just have it on the sidelines. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing HELOCs yet being um, these lines of credit being shortened or closed out there at all? Mm -mm. No, I haven't. I, uh, I, I refer my uh, HELOCs out to different credit, you know, credit unions and banks that because bank, I could do them. But I mean, banks and credit union, I just try to you know do the, what's right for the client. I think their banks and credit unions are set up. Um, I've got I've got several referral networks, you know, people I can refer them to that. I just refer them because they're set up to do it more efficiently and cost effectively than me doing a seventy five thousand dollar HELOC. Well, here's some interesting news from Goldman Sachs we'll end with here. Americans will dump up to $1.1 trillion in stocks this year and move the cash to credit and money market funds, says Goldman. So will this have an impact on rates? Will they be moving it to funds that invest in bonds, Pat? And as the market goes d way down, so will rates? Yeah, I don't think... Yeah, moving that amount of money would have some effect, but you know, it, obviously, there's a lot more factors that have to play into it than yeah, a trillion dollars moving into buying bonds. It would be you know certainly have a a great effect, but you know that's their prediction. Who knows? I mean, um, yeah, you know the yeah. Feds and expectations. There's a lot more than just goes into it as far as rates. But Barry's saying that he's just saying, hang on. He goes, we're going through a tough time. It's a it's a, the volatility index has been very. It's probably the highest it's been in uh, since. I think it was many years. I don't know the exact year, but I mean, um, it's, it's pretty nutty trying, you know, I'm glad I watch it. Like I watch it because, um, you know, like you said, it's, uh, you, you really, it's just crazy. I mean, it's crazy how volatile, like you said, I could, you could lock somebody at seven and a quarter and then three days later it's at six and a half. I mean, yeah. that, and that's, that's, that could be a $200 a month payment difference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. I, I've had a few comments on here that says, you know, look, it's a long term game. You know, why are you watching rates fluctuate? Well, because the buyers are. Yeah. And, and it affects their wallet. So, you know, we like to look at track at it is, you know, I realize that real estate's not a stock market and not trying to treat it that way. But our clients want, you know, the best rate of the month. And yeah. uh, so you end up watching it. You know, Pat, you watch it every day. Like you just gave an example of two of the clients that, you know, you probably could have locked last week, but now you're saving them a bucket load of money because you're reading the tea leaves and you didn't lock them till yesterday and today. So, yeah. mm -hmm. um, I mean, yeah, you call you you know obviously not myself in the back, but I mean, you call you call a call center like a just a regular call center, and they don't, or you know, I'm not gonna name names, but you know, you get these guys that just say, okay, it's a 30 day close, I'm gonna do a 30 day lock. Well, that that to me is brainless. I mean, that's just I know a lot of mortgage people like to take the risk off the table and say, you know, I, I want to just lock it and go. Yeah, I get it. But if rates have been increasing the last three weeks, there's probably going to be a day, a week or a couple of days within that period of when, within 30 days that we're going to see it go where I could say, you know, go from seven and a quarter down to six and a half or six and five ace. 
and or save the guy, you know, three, four, ten grand in closing costs. You know, so if you put a little thought into it, yeah, I take the risk, you know. But I, you know, I've been just watching Barry and just watching people that I watch and just kind of get a feel for it. You know, I feel confident. So yeah, it makes a big difference. We'll do a deep dive in that tomorrow when we're on live at three. And uh oh, um toss this out. Um we're also going to discuss as a group because I'm projected by April 22nd to reach 1 million views on this channel. So yeah, that's so awesome. Um, well, I'm, let's just... I'm trying to figure out what kind of an event we're going to have or prizes or something. So I, I want to, I want to have a big splash on that when that happens. Cause well, let's, that's, that's being, a lot of viewers for this little channel. So. Being on, being on the internet, let's, let's, let's twist this a little bit. It's a, a million view errors. View -ers. <laughs> million viewers. No, a million viewers. And we always say we have millions of viewers watching us. Millions, well, we have millions and millions. Yes, it's, it's, it's out there. Yeah, we can. Uh, Just not all at the same time. That's all. Yeah, we can we can change <laughs> that. And we still have our uh, million view um, ticker up here. There it is. It's by Ruby. Um, so we had the digits. So, um, yeah, we can twist that around just like other YouTubers twist around the uh the real estate real market, real market. <laughs> and uh, and uh, let me know if you can attend the weekend real estate manipulators meeting um, at the Golden Corral <laughs> this this Saturday, and uh, so as we fudge the data. So, hope everybody has a great weekend coming up, and it looks like it's not going to be raining. Get out, see the flowers, and thanks for joining us. Yep, see you, buddy. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.